Welcome to the regular meeting of Wednesday, May 23rd, 2018, at 6 o'clock p.m. Please make the roll call. Freeholder Graham. Tardy. Um, Freeholder Lazaro. Here. Freeholder Patillo. Here. Freeholder Rose. Uh, Freeholder Director Present. Rose. And Freeholder Yardley will be absent. Have a moment of silence to salute the flag, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, PL 1975, adequate notice is defined by Section 3 via Chapter 231, PL 1975, has been made by regular mail, such notice being submitted on May 18, 2018, from the Administrative Center of the County of Sussex, located at 1 Spring Street, New, New Jersey, to the following, New Jersey Herald, New Jersey Sunday Herald, Star Ledger, WSUS Radio, WNJ Radio. It's also posted on the bulletin board, maintaining the administrative center for the public announcements has been submitted to the Sussex County Clerk, compliance with said act. We have a motion to approve the agenda. So, so moved. moved. Motion by Patillo. Second. Second by Lazaro. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it, the agenda is approved. Executive session, closed session. Resolution regarding providing for an executive closed session not open to the public in accordance with provisions of NJSA 10.4 12 at SEC. Whereas the subject matters about to be discussed may ex be excluded from public portion of the meeting by resolution of the Board of Chosen Freeholders as an exemption to the quote Open Public Meetings Act, end quote, pursuant to NJSA 10.4 12 B. And whereas it appears necessary for the Board of Chosen Freeholders to discuss such matters in executive session, now therefore be resolved that the Board of Chosen Freeholders of the County of Sussex in accordance with the provisions of NJSA 10.4-12B and NJSA 10.4-13, the Board at this time enter into an executive session of which the public shall be excluded. And be it further resolved that the general nature of the subject to be discussed relate to the following items authorized by NJSA 10.4-12B as designated below. Matters related to litigation, negotiation, and attorney client pr privilege, specific to CWA, 1032, CWA 1032 Supervisors, T CWA 1032 Social Services, and PBA 138 Sheriff's Unit Contracts, and matters related to the employment relationship with county treasurer appointment. We are further resolved that the deliberations conducted in closed session may be disclosed to the public upon the determination of Sussex County Board of Chosen Freeholders, or provided by law that the public interest will no longer be served by such confidentiality. M. We are further resolved that upon completion for the business for which the board has entered into the executive session, the board shall reconvene and resume its meeting open to the public. We have a motion to enter executive session. So moved. Second by Patillo, second by Lazaro. Discussion? <coughs> Roll call, please. Freehilda Lazaro? Yes. Freehilda Patillo? Yes. Freehilda Director Rose? Yes. Yeah. Now I have a motion to return to the regular order of business from executive session. Motion to return. Motion Second. by Graham. Second by Patillo. Discussion. Roll call, please. Freeholder Graham. Here. Freeholder Lazaro. Yes. Freeholder Patillo. Yes. Freeholder Director Rose. Yes. Proclamations, certificates, <laughs> presentations. Proclamations recognizing Fairview Lake YMCA camps. I have a motion. So moved. Motion by Patillo. Second. Second by Graham. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? The ayes have a motion passes. And we're not. Uh, there should be someone here. Yes. Oh. Oh. Here. Here. We have the. Yes. I thought I saw the one. Yeah. 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 Which one is this? Oh. I don't think you have your will. Can I do it? Yes. yes. I brought Fairview, not Fairview Lakes, but I brought Fairview. Sorry. 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 Before I have to hold oh. something. Yes. No. I was a city kid, <laughs> so the YMCA meant to get a chance to George Graham. Hello, Bob. Hi, Emily. Emily. I'm so happy to be able to do this. Well, what, 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 we come over here so we can be seen by the public. Sure. Okay. I'm going to read the proclamation, and I'm going to ask you all to say a little bit something about the uh, fair Okay. I take out the whereas, and we're going to just get it to the there. There you go. I'm going to start with the first. Fairview Lake YMCA camps recognizing 50 years of Laurel Ridge and women in camping. Whereas, the only whereas I'm going to do, Fairview Lake YMCA camps is a cause-driven nonprofit camp and conference center uh, serving over 24,000 guests annually. 
and in 1968, Camp Laurel Ridge was founded, opening Fairview Lake Camp experience to women for the first time. In 2018, we'll mark the 50th anniversary of this founding, and more importantly, 50 years of providing a deep and inspirational impact on thousands of women. During the 2017 summer camp season, 500 young men came to camp and over 12,500 women of all ages attended programs. The YMCA, through a cause-driven initiatives, focus on healthy living, social responsibility, and youth development for the community. And it's fun. Mm -hmm. Amen. It is appropriate to recognize the value and accomplishments that Fairview Lakes Camp Laurel Ridge has had on the community. And as much as it did in 1968, Camp Laurel Ridge continues to prepare for young women for life's experiences. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Sussex County Board of Chosen Freeholders do hereby proclaim June the 15th through 17th, 2018, as celebration of 50 years of Laurel Ridge and Women in Camping Weekend, and urge all citizens to join us in congratulating Fairview Lake YMCA camps on this historic milestone and encourage families to become involved in the celebration and upcoming programs. By order of the Board of Chosen Freeholders, Jonathan Rose, Director, Sylvia Patillo, Deputy Director, Herb Yardley, Carl Lazaro, George Graham, Freeholder. Before I hand it over to you guys and, and ask you to speak sure. before this, like I said, I was a city kid, and so uh, being able to, uh, I, I remember going to the Hackensack YMCA and taking us up to Sussex County and where we went, that's where we were kids. Uh, can you say a few things? Then? Be happy to. Yeah. Um, we are, this is our 103rd summer, 103rd year we've been in operation, but uh, camp got a little brighter 50 years ago when we realized that uh, we were missing half the population. And the difference it has made by bringing women, the boys and the girls together is amazing because it's opened our eyes to, to realizing the diversity and the inclusion of the way we should be in everything that we do. And, uh, and we're excited about it. Now, this year is also gonna be the first summer Emily Galbraith is going to be our summer camp director. So, so we'll have a woman who is the summer camp director for the first time. So we're excited that, uh, that Emily's gonna be here. Matt has been our uh, conference coordinator for the last few years and has a rich history with Fairy Lake going back about 17, 18 years now. Um, so it's the tradition that, uh, that really makes us special and being part of Sussex County is very important to us. Well, it's very important you are part of Sussex yes. County. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your help. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sure. Who's that? No, wait, wait. Good. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next up, we have a presentation from the Division of Health concerning the Mosquito Program. Hi, everyone. I'm Paige Lockburner from the Mosquito Control, the Sussex County Medicine Center Control. Thank you for having me. Would you mind speaking to my seminar in the microphone? Yes, please. Okay. It's only for us. Yeah, you can take them off. It feeds into the recorder. Thank you. No, no, you just take the microphone. It's just for recording purposes. It's, it's for recording. Okay. 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 So the Sussex County Office of Mosquito Control is dedicated to reducing mosquito population to protect public health and facilitate the enjoyment of the natural resources of the county. Um, we use an integrated pest management or IPM approach to control mosquitoes, which is a strategy that utilizes available mosquito control methods to control mosquitoes to a reduced tolerable level while maintaining a quality environment. Um, we use the knowledge of mosquito biology, such as the life cycle, um, species specific behavior, um, combined with many different aspects of surveillance to help us determine the thresholds needed for the control of mosquito populations. Um, nothing is done unless the data tells us to do it, essentially. And pesticide use does not happen on a reoccurring basis. <coughs> <coughs> NROP 
is we have three full-time employees. Um, we are certified um, commercial pesticide app computers um, from the New Jersey DEP. We also are certified ID specialists um, to ID mosquito, you know, mosquito biology and mosquito control. We have four seasonal employees, and they are licensed underneath my license um, as operator pesticide like tool and operator pesticide license. Um, we also have a full-time lab and a full-time ID specialist who IDs mosquitoes to species, which is important for our IPM program. We don't want to target, we don't want to target um, a species that we don't need to control. Because not every mosquito needs to be controlled. Um, so how do we use our IPM approach? One of the ways we decide where to focus our efforts is through the complaints we receive in the public. And that's about mosquito breeding habitats and or high mosquito population. <coughs> um, here is a graph of the complaints we received in 2017. We received a total of 175, which is within our average for a season. Um, we typically receive anywhere between 150 to 200 complaints a year. Um, the number of complaints that we, that we receive is rainfall dependent. So we receive a lot of rainfall, obviously, that number is going to increase. Our complaints usually consist of people wanting inspections and treatments of wetlands on and around the properties. Um, and sometimes they want inspections of big properties that have been. So when we receive a complaint from the public, the inspectors go out and they, um, they'll inspect the natural habitats around the area, such as the swamps, the marsh, the river pools. And they'll also inspect the man made habitat, which is the containers around the homes, um, swimming pools, things like that. <coughs> there are anything. Um, usually, when people complain, it's the problem is coming from their yard and they're just not aware of it. So, that's the first thing that we do. Um, so, once the inspectors go out and they do a larval survey of the water, they determine if they need to make treatment or not. And the treatments are made by the inspectors. So disease surveillance is the core of our program. Everything we do is to increase the risk of disease transmission to the human population. We collect adult mosquitoes in the most intensive tracks. The two seen here are the ones we use the most for disease surveillance. Um, the ABC trap, which is the blue one, is designed to mimic humans by using CO2 as a alert. So the cooler part of the trap contains dry ice, which then a plume is emitted at the bottom of the trap. The mosquitoes can pour CO2 in the way and then they get sucked into the white part of the which is the net. Um, these tracks are overnight tracks that are used for new <coughs> um, because it collects the mosquitoes that are bottom of people. The grabber trap, which is on the bottom, is designed to sample our container species. That means the mosquitoes that utilize container habitats for egg laying, such as tires for grass and things like that. Um, these tracks collect mosquitoes that are involved with the Western cycle, so we use a lot of these collections for our virus testing. The term grabber means a female that has taken a blood meal and is laying her eggs, so it is a good tool to use to find females that have taken blood and potentially acquired the virus. Um, we don't test our own mosquitoes. We send pools of selected tracks um, around the county to the public health and environmental laboratory, located at the Department of Public Health, the New Jersey Department of Public Health. Um, those tests are free of cost to the counties because the state mosquito control coordination covers the cost, but of course we are limited to as many samples we can submit, which uh, <coughs> we're only allowed to sample, we're only allowed to submit 15 to 20 pools a week. Um, so just to give you an idea of what a pool is, one pool equals one trap collection. So on average we have 40 collections a week to select 20 to be tested. So we base our selections off of historical and current virus presence, um, human population, and things like that. We test our mosquitoes routinely for West Nile virus, um, Triple E, which is Eastern Equine Encephalitis. Um, these viruses are endemic to our county, but we still test mosquitoes to monitor the virus um, in order to de decrease the risk of transmission to humans. We also routinely test for lacrosse encephalitis. Um, because neighboring counties in certain states have had positive cases. However, we have never found this disease in our mosquito populations. Um, we have not tested for Jamestown Canyon, even though I put it up there. Um, but the state health has informed me we could test for it next year. 
Sussex County had the first and only new case in New Jersey of James Canyon in 2015. Since I was made aware of this, I have requested to test mosquitoes for this virus. The health department is waiting for the release of the virus in the CDC. Uh, once they receive it, then we can go ahead and test humans and mosquitoes. And so hopefully we'll be doing that next year. Um, we have tested collections of Aedes albopictus, which is the Asian tiger mosquito, which is the invasive mosquito, I don't know if you've heard of that. Um, we do test it for dengue, Zika, and chicken gut man. And in 2016, the state received the grant money, so we were able to do that. Um, for now, we just do if there's a known travel human case in the Sussex County. We will then test the surrounding areas. Okay. Um, there are some water traps that we use for balance. The New, New Jersey light trap um, uses a light as an attractive. We leave that up all year round, and we have a light coming twice a week. Um, that gives us a broader view of what goes on in our county um, because it's sampling constantly. Um, the resting box is used for um, triple E, which is the Eastern Uniform Encephalitis Surveillance, um, and the biosepinol is for the E's on the biggest is, you know. Okay, so another part of our program, our IPM approach, is the biocontrol program. We stock fish in abandoned pools once a year. The fish are free from the state fish hatchery um, and the coordination with the state office and mosquito control. We, uh, this help, uh, helps us cut down on the use of pesticide, which also cuts down on our costs. So once they are stocked, we continue to monitor them throughout the season to ensure they are doing their job. <coughs> Source reduction is another part of our IPA program. Um, our source reduction, we clean up discarded tires um, left on one side of the roads. Tires are a common larval habitat that can produce large amounts of adult mosquitoes. We started this program in the fall of 2014 with clean communities. Uh, they pay for the trailer for the tire collection. <coughs> um, once the tra trailer is full, the vendor picks up the trailer and recycles the tires. Um, we perform most of this work in the winter months. A major part of our program is treating large designated wetlands by cleaning to target immature mosquitoes or harming in the water. These areas are mosquito habitats that are too large to be treated by urban applications. <coughs> um, they are over, and they're over 10 acres in size. We have over 4,700 acres that could potentially produce large amounts of mosquito larvae. We only routinely inspect 40 to 50 sites and treat around 2,000 acres, depending on the amount of <coughs> Um, so a typical day consists of mosquito staff inspecting the sites on the ground, which is very labor intensive. A lot of these areas are isolated and require long distance hiking to get to. Based on the information the inspector sent me, I determine what sites need to be treated. I calculate the acreage and the product, and then uh, we meet up with our private contractor, Rebecca Lynn Flying Services, and we go to the claim of pesticide, and he applies. <coughs> Um, he uses a, a Cessna. Um, some counties use helicopters and use them. Um, okay. Another part of our larger sighting <coughs> program uh, is treating storm drains. Storm drains can hold stagnant water for a certain period of time, just enough time for mosquitoes to success, successfully complete their life cycle. <coughs> also, these mosquitoes that utilize this particular habitat are also involved in the fire cycle. So treatment of these basins ultimately cuts down the disease vector populations. Um, the map shows how we use ArcGIS as a way to <coughs> storm drains, as well as tropical <coughs> treatments. The red dots are storm drains that haven't been treated. Once they are treated in the field, the inspectors can click on each individual dot and enter treatment making the dot green. And once that treatment runs out, 14 or 30 days, the dot turns back to red. So then I know we need to go back out and treat this storm. So it's a good managing tool, and it helps the inspectors uh, be more efficient because they're not searching for the storm drains at the end of space. Oh, and that's just the product that we apply. It's a little packet of BTI <sighs> So adult site applications are our last resort in our IBM plan. Um, I touched on this earlier in the presentation. Um, we typically perform our adult site applications when we find disease in our mosquito populations. We also spray if there's high nuisance in our high vector population in an area. 
um, use a ULV truck mounted sprayer, which is an old <coughs> volume. This method is designed to decrease toxicity into the environment by creating small droplets of pesticide that have to come in contact with the mosquito in order to kill it. It's considered low exposure and in combination with our low toxic products, um, there is minimal toxic effect towards humans and the environment. Um, prior to every application, we do follow the notification regulations set forth by the New Jersey DEP. Um, we notify beekeepers and we have a um, free notification list for no sprays if anyone who wants to be free notified. So we have to make all those phone calls. And I also notify the towns too. It is important for us to get the correct message out to the public. Um, we are commonly misunderstood because of our use of pesticides. So involvement in various public events is really important. We try to participate in as many community days as we can um, because community days are a direct way to reach our residents. Um, we do present on request. Um, I have a business <coughs> at the Vernon Senior Center once a year. We do various school events. Um, we have a traveling 80s on pictures display, which is in the middle picture. Um, we put that from a week at a time at the <coughs> school building, and then we also do the libraries. So it's another way for us to reach our residents and teach them about state self pictures, which is a huge concern. Uh, we talk about disease. We also have collaborated with other agencies. Um, we did some mosquito awareness week last week, at the end of June. We did roadside cleanups with um, SUMA and Clean Community. And we uh, asked certain volunteers in town to help us clean up litter along the side of the road because we're trying to teach them about the ease of the issue that we're having and also, um, you know, it reduces the habitat for them to lay their eggs. So we're hopefully reducing the, uh, the risk of disease transmission. Um, and we also participate in the sewer Well, isn't it exciting thing? We found a new mosquito in for Sussex County, it's not any mosquito in general, but just for Sussex County. Um, we found it in Sparta, it's the Aegis at Atlanticus. Um, Sussex County has the most diverse mosquito species in the state. We're very proud of that. And <laughs> 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 we do like to pick them too. <laughs> like we, preserve them. Can them. we pick where we want to transport them? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. So we have 49 species out of the 63 in the state. So that's what you're saying. 49 out of 63. So we're really just missing the salt marsh in the So we're really more comfortable. You actually have one. Anyway. We've got to get a salt marsh. Okay, so last year we did a little bit of black fly research. Um, we do get a lot of complaints about mosquitoes and we do set our tracks when we're and it's not mosquitoes, it's actually black flies. So we do have a black fly problem in Sussex County. Um, we just couldn't figure out where they were coming from. Other counties such as Warren and Hunterdon, they have uh, the Delaware River that is possible to so easily treat and eliminate this problem. Um, I know that's not coming, our source is not the river because it's, our county is too big. Um, it must be coming from somewhere else. And so I hired an individual who was doing, he was a postdoc grad, and he came in and he was like, I think they're coming from the spillways. So we looked at the spillways of the lake communities, the lake spillways, and uh, sure enough, they were loaded with black fly oh, nice. So, um, why, right? <coughs> why? That's running water, it would be very yeah. difficult. Yeah, black flies need running water to complete their life cycle. I'll be darned. Yeah. So he yeah, was pretty creative, he came up with these. Um, those are fly sticky traps that go as you hang from the ceiling. You just place them on the spillways, and uh, what the adult black flies do is they come in and they lay their eggs on debris. And so they use that and thought that was debris. So we collected a lot of black fly adults that way. Um, we also decided that we hmm, make use of this data. So we tried to use black flies as a sentinel for the viruses. The mosquito viruses. So we use birds. We used to use birds to do that. You know, if we had found a dead bird, we would go out and set a trap and test the mosquitoes in that area because you know maybe there's West Nile there because bird bed. So we tried to do black flies the same way, but we tested them and they, they were all negative. But it was really tough. Um, but we also see this as a way now to help our lake community decrease their black flies. 
Um, we, it would be really easy to do that without the use of pesticides. You can stop the flow, which would, they would be able to complete their life cycle. So that's one way, or you can increase the flow to get rid of the debris. So we're looking at doing something like that. Hopefully. <laughs> So the incidence of tick-borne disease in the northeastern states is increasing. New pathogens have been identified and vector distributions appear to be expanding. Unfortunately, due to funding challenges, the information and expertise needed to assess risk inform the public and act proactively is dramatically lacking. Currently, there is not a statewide surveillance program similar to what we do at Mosquito. Um, so human and tick surveillance are needed to identify new pathogens and monitor, monitor ones we know about. Um, so um, I don't know if anyone saw the CDC bioscience report that was published earlier this month. Um, it reported that tick-borne diseases have more than doubled in the U.S. from 2004 to 2016, with New Jersey being in the top 20%. Can I ask you a question? Sure. What, what, what do they attribute that to? The increase? Other, uh, other than there's more tests. Why would there be more tests? Or is it more heat? I, they don't, I don't think they know. It could be just a, a lot of different things. Um, that's that's why we need to do... do it, yeah. Deer, deer and the white foot mice have a lot yeah. of Yeah, that could be, um, the climate could be right, mm -hmm. and it just takes a while to adjust, and the viruses change, and it would be a couple different things. Mm -hmm. We really haven't do. had a very, very ice cold winter mm -hmm. that's yeah. frozen them all out. Right. Yeah, climate. There used to be a vaccine for Lyme disease. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I, I, now I think I used it on a dog. Whatever happened to that? I'm yeah. not sure. I was the last to get it in Sussex County. Really? And the 4th of July was the late, it's a three shot series. And they discontinued it because people uh, had complained they were getting adverse reactions. And the pharmaceutical company said that they put it. We're not going to bother with it anymore. They quit making it. And uh, it was a series of three shots, and it worked. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised that they, 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 they haven't done any research or continued on with it. Yeah. So New Jersey is in the top 20% of states having the highest numbers of tick-borne disease cases. And New Jersey has reported 51,000 related cases during 2004 and 2016. We are third only to New York and Pennsylvania. So we're in the middle of it. Um, so Lyme disease is just one of those tick-borne diseases being reported successfully as you see the graph. In 2017, we were one of the highest along with 100 and more counties. And we also have highs in rates of anaplasmosis and babesiosis. Um, yeah, so I don't know if you have heard about the new exotic tick that's here too. Um, that's not here, it's a Canada, we don't But it has been found in 100 and more Yes. Um, in Alan, Virginia. You see on the, one, of the, one of the ticks on this picture? Uh, the ones in blue, the top ones. The ones in blue are the new tree? Yeah, the Asian long term of the tree, the long horn tick. The small ones? Oh, they swarm. Oh. But those little ones are the larva? Right. It's our first stage. It's, like a prune. It's, it's getting tougher for people to do site work. So if they if, if I can call you up and you can identify what kind of a tick it is. Yeah, we encourage that because uh, that would be. So you would know if it's a tick right. that would cause Lyme disease right. or, or not. Right. So yeah. you can't squash it. You have to say that. Yes. Yeah. 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 So that. So do that and take them off the animals. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So um yeah with the. Since this longhorn tick has come into the picture, um, the USDA has asked local mosquito controls to be a drop-off location for anyone who has found this tick. So we're looking into being that drop-off location um, and giving information to the public if they had any questions about it. Um, and then the USDA comes and picks them up and takes them off. But how are we getting that information out to the public? They're, they have created a website. It's not live yet. And I'll put, we'll put that on our website. But you have to do more than that. Yeah, a lot of the websites passive. How do we actively 
promote that? Well, I know, I know it's kind of a question you can't answer yet, I mean, but when you do get to that point, yeah. would you please reach out to us as to how we can actively pursue getting that work? I know pretty much a lot of our information will work with Ford. Um, we'll go through Facebook, we'll go through Twitter, and then we can also the use our uh, our we'll go through towns. The yep. towns have and to be able to mm -hmm. mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Great scout project. Yeah, that would be great because that would be passive surveillance for ticks and that would be the start for ticks and surveillance. That's great. Um, yeah, so the next slide. So we participated in the New Jersey Tick List. Like I said before, there's no surveillance for ticks. So the um, Center for Vector Biology at Rutgers University and the Monmouth County Tick Board Disease Laboratory decided to ask mosquito control to help with the surveillance because we're already knowledgeable in it um, and how to do and how there's a certain way you need to do things. Um, so 21 counties <coughs> participated in a workshop that they held and they trained us in tick biology, tick surveillance, and everything tick. And then one day we did a uh, tick surveillance and we did um, two locations in Sussex County and we collected only like four ticks. But we <laughs> did. <laughs> 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 But yeah, that's what they're hoping to do. They're hoping to get a snapshot of what's going on in the state. So we were lucky enough to participate in the first ever tick list. Any questions? Okay, thank you. Oh, hey, Carol has a uh, just can you tell us how many mosquitoes <coughs> breed in the little like uh, cap of the soda bottle? Yeah, so that's the Amy's Albuquerque's mosquito, and you could have uh, like 100 to 200 mosquitoes, it's just this, if it allows. Um, that mosquito utilizes such a small habitat, so that's why litter is, is a huge thing in Amy's Albuquerque's. It utilizes those small things that the other mosquitoes aren't. Great. Paige, what does the invasive longhorn tick do? Or what disease does it carry? Lights. <sighs> it's unknown at this time. It has been tested for human uh, related pathogens and it's tested negative. Um, but we do know that when a new tick is introduced into an area like this, it takes a couple of years for it to pick up the virus and establish the virus inside. So it doesn't mean it's not going to be able to transmit these diseases that we have here. It's just unknown at this time. Can I ask a question? Sure. Yeah. Uh, we had a fairly bad end to our winter. Does that have any effect on both mosquito or tick populations? Um, yeah, it can. So um, cold winter, you'd see a lower population. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and especially with certain species of mosquitoes, like the Aedes albopictus eggs, they can't survive a harsh winter, so that's good for us. Um, a lot of mosquitoes overwinter as adults, so if they're over, they didn't pick a good place to overwinter, they would be. So they go, they go dormant then for a period mm -hmm. of time? Yeah, they hang out with a housing Yeah. And then uh, in terms of the public uh, outreach, um, you may remember two years ago there was an issue with the reverse 911 system. Has that been resolved and now working? Not at this time. I think we're still looking into it. We can look into it. Uh, right now we're complying with what is the state asks us to do. There's specific standards and uh, that's a system that we could look to expand more out for it, but it's not required by our state standards. That's my understanding uh, that we have already paid for the contract for that. Um, so it's, is, it, is it a labor issue? What would it take to fully implement Probably that? just training. Okay. Yeah. Is there any chance we could? What, one of the challenges with the reverse 911 system for this <coughs> particular uh, application for mosquito control, particularly when it comes to spraying, <coughs> is uh, the labor that's required. Uh, the, the, the addresses. It, exactly. And so um, what had been found in the past uh, was that if, if the uh, area that was being sprayed uh, did not match what was put out in the reverse notification system, uh, you would have people saying, you know, well, I didn't see, you know, I didn't see it in my neighborhood. Um, it, it becomes a labor issue relative to the uh, integration with the, the, the notification system. One of the things that's important to note and, and came out of some of the work that I was doing uh, Vision Health and Office of Mosquito Control is that people actually have the ability to sign up um, if they're particularly concerned, if they have respiratory issues and such. 
um, and all of that information is on our website. So there are other methods outside of the reverse 911 uh, that people can take advantage of that will actually provide better uh, a better response to them uh, than the amount of time <coughs> that it takes to identify uh, the areas where spraying takes place because you know as, as Paige has uh, pointed out you know depending on where uh, the office determines there are uh, areas in need the, the, the reverse notification system just is not as flexible uh, in terms of being able to provide the yeah, targeted uh, targeted notification so I would encourage everyone and those that might be watching on the video uh, to go to the county's website um, look up the office of mosquito control and there's all kinds of very good information relative to how you can go about uh, receiving notifications uh, as well as a lot of the information that Paige has shared with us. Okay, so people can opt into a specific notification about spraying that. Yeah, we have our own list okay. um, that we keep on file and we have to call and we know. Who and how calls. often do people need to opt in? Is that every annually or just once you're on there? Once you're on there, you're always on there. Okay. Yeah. But before you spray, you notify the town that you're coming to spray. Yes, and the PD. And the towns all have their own emergency notification system. Yes. So if it works correctly, once you notify them, they should then notify residents. Last time they didn't. Has they were notified, but it didn't go to the second step. Has that ever been addressed in our health calls? I know that it was actually addressed it's by it's a letter that uh, Jim had sent out last year um, asking for uh, local support. I believe, Jim, that that letter was sent out to each of the mayors. Um, trying to go back to like we're going on two years ago. Um, Can we do that again? So, yeah. Did we put that again? Mm -hmm. well, when does spraying begin? Let's, when do you start? This time of year or later in the, this time of year? Typically for the end of the season, what would you do in the beginning? We're concerned about Close. the population so at, also. On yes, the next, yeah. mm -hmm. on the next phone ideas. call, can that be brought up? That issue, so the towns know that they can, that they're going to get an, an alert, and then they can reverse nine, nine one. Yes. They're, they're, mm -hmm. I mean, we definitely it goes out via social media. They actually, the people who might have issues, because um, we have what they call as a spray list and a no spray list. So one of the pictures she showed you with the <coughs> green lines and the red lines uh, for the adult deciding, that's where they actually turn off the spray. They're going to ask somebody's house. That person has said. I don't, I'm not a person who likes pesticides, they yeah, actually turn, to mention that. They turn and it's the done by off. GPS, so it's pretty It's done, done by yeah. GPS, um, yeah. but we actually have to call every single, of those, every one of those people. Beekeepers we call 24 hours, or yeah, even more in advance, and then at least the individuals that we call them 12 hours, so they actually get a phone call from us, okay. yes. um, as opposed to the reverse 911 call system. And our GPS system would have the beekeepers and the noise sprays downloaded in there, so when the truck is going by that property, alarm goes off to remind the inspectors to turn off the sprayer. Okay. So we are turning the sprayers off around these properties, okay. and we work closely with beekeepers. And or, so, but you can be on the notification list. Like I, I say, I want to be notified, but you can still spray by my house. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's, like they wanna, yeah. that's like the thumbs up. Yeah. They want to know when the mosquito okay. the truck is coming by. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Thor, can you get that on Facebook? A post about that, and we'll try and share it around. To, that, that you can sign up for notifications? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Um, a couple more questions. Sure. I'm sorry. Um, have you? Uh, there's been a lot of uh, a lot of research into the bioengineered mosquitoes. Uh, mm -hmm. I know there's been a trial in Florida. Have you been following that trial? And do you anticipate that technology being used here at any time? Um, I have not heard if it's been successful. Um, I think that takes years of research to determine if it's available to us at one point. <coughs> I'm not really sure if it's something that could work here in this county. But I think it would have to be approved at the state level for them to, yeah. for it to get rolled out at the yeah, counties. for sure. Okay. And how is Sussex County doing with respect to ticks? Uh, do we need more money to, to do more research? We're or? never going to say no to more money. <laughs> no, I know, but... Um, but, but uh, do active surveillance yes. passive and active surveillance. So, yes. so you're not currently doing active or passive surveillance, no. right? No. And would there be any advantage to the public to have, say, an active surveillance? Yes. What, what would be that? Um, knowledge of tick populations in the area. The change what, what, could they, tick what can we do with that? Can we can we also uh, apply you, pesticides for you do ticks? A tick management. Okay. Is the is tick management on a, on a cost basis? Is it similar to what we're paying for mosquito management, or would it be? A, is, is it more expensive, more difficult to apply? It would be more expensive for ticks. Yeah. 
um, but there isn't a lot of information on that because nobody really does it in the government side of things. It's more of a personal protective thing. It's Within somebody's own property boundaries. Yeah. Okay. So we'd have to look at public lands, where the people are. We need to find out where people are going and who's being affected by them. Because I, I foresee at some point in the future uh, that, that tick-borne illnesses are going to surpass mosquito-borne illnesses as the major. They already have. And, and the and the very serious diseases too. I mean, not yes. that mosquito-borne diseases aren't, but tick-borne diseases uh, can be debilitating, lifetime de yes. debilitating. Right. Okay. Can we revisit that during the budget process for for next year, um, and and get us some numbers with respect to what it would start to look like to, to roll out just the research side of things, active and passive. Um, yeah, you want to do. You want to have a surveillance in place before you start. Yeah, and to see where. Yeah. So that would be the first step. Okay. For sure. And that's all I had. Thank you. No, thank you. So thank nice. you again. Thank you, Paige. Thank you. Very much. Very well done. Well, we have to get our microphone back. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <coughs> all right, no public hearings. Public session from the floor. Please note everyone's asked to keep their comments to five minutes or less to only address issues regarding agenda items followed by a three minute response time from the freeholder board. Please state your name, print your name, and municipality on the sign. I have a motion open to the meeting to the public. Or so I can tell them. Second by Lazaro. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it. The floor is open to the public. Anyone who's pushed to speak on items on the agenda, please come forward. Mm -hmm. Seeing no one, can I have a motion to close the meeting to the public? Motion to close. Motion by Graham. Second. Second by um, Villa <laughs> Sorry. Uh, this is a discussion. All those in favor? Those opposed? The ayes have the floor is closed to the public. Appro approval of consent agenda. Freeholders, please review consent uh, agenda items. Director Freeholders. Anything in your comments? I'm sorry. I would have objected. I thought, I just kept I thought <laughs> approval of consent it. agenda. <laughs> Let's so sneak one out, you guys. Get out of here early. Trying to shove us down. <laughs> Free hold of his arm. Would you like to have? <laughs> oh, oh God, he just pulled out a package. package. Um, I had it all, all done nice and neat, and I left it on the, in the printer. Um, uh, I was uh, privileged to uh, uh, attend and speak uh, the opening remarks at the Sussex County Community College graduation in a miserable, rainy day. Um, <laughs> But that didn't, and that didn't affect anybody's enthusiasm and excitement. It was a delightful afternoon and evening, and uh, uh, the youngsters, the oldsters that were graduating uh, were excited and, uh, and slogged around in the mud and, and had a grand time. And it was a, an excellent graduation. I was very pleased to be there, and uh, they, they've done a, a great job up there at the college, and those kids were, were excited. It was interesting to know and they talked with one of the uh, uh, one of the administrators that uh, there was a substantial number of men. I said I noticed a lot of male graduates this year, and he said yes, there's a large number of veterans that went back to County Community College and, and finished up their degrees. So I was very pleased and excited to see that. That was a that was a great thing to see. Um, uh, the road department is. Uh, dealing with the weather as best you can. Uh, there's a whole bunch of roads that are planned for um, uh, repaving. Uh, they completed 519 in, uh, uh, from Newton all the way to uh, uh, the uh, uh, Warren County border. 618 uh, was done from 206 to 94. 619 is underway and might be finished at this time. Uh, the rain held them up a lot because they can't do the uh, things that they gotta do when it's wet out. Uh, so they'll be moving they further down. along uh, on the rest of the areas and Lightcrest Road, uh, and Branchville area, Deckertown Turnpike, and River Road, uh, and Montague and Blair Road. Those will be uh, done in the near, in the very near future as they move along. And I must say that uh, uh, the contractor, Shifano Construction Company, has done an excellent job. They've been very neat, clean, and very cooperative with the community, and they've done a great job with their. Uh, uh, their flagging and uh, control of traffic. So that's been really, really very good to see. Uh, the bridges that they're, they're, they're starting are still going, uh, undergoing uh, uh, engineering stuff, and that will be started this year. And some of the, the technical stuff with the wires, lines of poles being moved for alignment is being done. 
Um, I also was privileged to go to the uh, NJAC uh, uh, convention down in Atlantic City, um, where I was uh, pleased to attend some, set up some uh, uh, sessions on what's going on with 911 centers and in county government. We also had a panel of past governors who spoke to the entire group. And uh, I don't know if there's anybody here that remembers Governor Florio. Um, uh, he was uh, true to form. He suggested uh, we need more taxes. <laughs> and we got them today from Governor Murphy, who signed a bunch of bills giving us more taxes. Uh, so I guess they, they, they keep doing that. But that wasn't the exciting thing that happened down at NJAC. Uh, and down that they had a competition for, um, I believe it was 12, you'll hear more about it later, uh, 12 vocational technical schools uh, who took up a whole room and prepared their gourmet delight for the entire organization. And uh, our, uh, this was the first year that uh, Sussex Tech uh, had the uh, privilege of going down there. There's, there's about five schools, four or five schools each year that are not invited and they rotate it. There's only a dozen that go. And this was our first year to go. And we took two awards, uh, the best display and the best presentation. And I will be bringing them in here before uh, the next couple of things, before they get out of school, hopefully. But they did an outstanding job. You couldn't have been more proud of them. They built a facade of a log cabin with deer heads in it and stuffed fish. Um, uh, all the things that you do and have in Sussex County uh, and in nature were in that little room. And the front of it had a table across the front where they served food from. And they had venison that they cooked absolutely perfectly and served on a crust of bread with a little gravy on it. It was awesome. The kids had a great time, they did a great job, and they, uh, for the first time down there, they won a couple of awards. Of course, there were all those fish people down there who <laughs> like oysters and all that stuff. Uh, and they took a couple of prizes. Yeah, it was pretty good though. But they, they, the youngsters <laughs> did a fantastic job. And uh, you can you can be proud of your vocational technical school. They were they were very very good. Uh, and that's all I have today. Thank you, Earl Graham. Can I take the time to use? Yeah. Okay. Um, I want first of all I want to thank the uh, Health and Human Services for being uh, very strongly re represented here tonight. Carol Nobert, Christine Florio, Lorraine Henson. I didn't see how to leave and Jim McDonald and Paige. Thank you very much for being here tonight. And thanks for that presentation, it was very good. I have uh, uh, some announcements from the, from the Department of Health and Human Services. One is that the design of PIN contest is uh, the, the final date for uh, submittal is June the 1st. And uh, that's the PIN for the Veterans Day that we do in October. And so far, some of the best PINs I've ever seen designed by anybody have come out of Sussex County. I carry a pocket full of them, and it's funny because even months later, uh, I had people asking them for me. Just last weekend, I was up at the range, and, and uh, a couple of veterans were there, so I happened to have pins for them. Um, Thursday, June the 7th, is the annual public hearing for the Sussex Department of Health and Human Services, uh, Division of Senior Services. This is a ver very big opportunity for people to speak their mind. Uh, they'll hold their annual public hearing on Thursday, June 7th, from 1.30 to 3 p.m. at the Sparta Senior Center. Um, That's a nice one. I'm going to go. Uh, health check for adolescents and adult health clinic on Wednesday, May 30th, from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. I can't go because I apparently have uh, jury duty. You better call me because otherwise you're going to come and rip, rip, rip me out of your house. She got the week after me. Did you guys get so? No, not yet. Okay, New Jer uh, NJC uh, Women's Health Screening is on uh, June the 7th from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. at Wheatsworth. NJC for uh, Men's Health Prostate Cancer Screening is uh, Wednesday, June 13th, 5.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. Gentlemen, go. That's all I can say. Um, 
There's a hepatitis vaccine clinic at the Pack on Fire Department on Thursday, May 24th, tomorrow. And JC outreach at the Beehive in Newton, Wednesday, May 30th. Breast survivor <coughs> event at uh, Project Self Sufficiency on Saturday, June the 9th, from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, sun safety health education at Project Self Sufficiency in Newton on Tuesday, June 12th, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, tuberculosis testing at the also at the, oh, the Center for Prevention and Counseling, I'm sorry, at uh, June the 12th from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. And there's a <coughs> municipality conference call. What we have is every month we call out to, we have a call in actually, to call in uh, like a, uh, uh, I, what, do you, what, I don't know what system we use, our own system? Yes. <coughs> Where every municipality calls in and they discuss topics. And this one, you won't believe it, they, we've got to be discussing mosquitoes. <laughs> How appropriate. <laughs> Food safety and men's health month. Um, communicable disease investigation. I always put this on here, the, the communicable diseases and also the uh, uh, wild animal bites, because the health department handles so such a wide diversity of things. And they really, when people say health department, they think of just people who go in and, and check the temperature of the potato salad. But there's probably a little bit more to what you do. I appreciate what you do. I appreciate what you do. Communicable diseases, there were 30 reported diseases diagnosed in Sussex County from May the 1st through May the 14th, in just in two weeks' time. May the 1st through 14th, there were 18 domestic or wild bite exposures. I also went to NJAC. I, I had an opportunity to go to a couple of seminars. One of them was, was particularly interesting, and I want to bring that to our agricultural development also here, is the Mammoth Rose Program, which seems to have something that would work very, very well with our county. Uh, it's the opportunity of being able to do like the, the farm to table type of publicity, but it publicizes all those options in, uh, in agriculture. And Sussex County has got growing options. In fact, we ran into a, a gentleman on Saturday night that was uh, growing, or he was doing milk, milk again. Uh, I also went to economic development, mostly put on by Mars County. Mars County is very much interested in working with us for uh, uh, working with the uh, economic development. So that's all I have to Thank you, Carolyn. Mm -hmm. Carolyn, Phil. Hi, I attended the Lake and Pack on Foundation block party, and uh, that was a lot of fun. That's when all four towns around Lake and Pack on come together at the state park, and all of the vendors and all of the different groups, and are, are, are present and you can just go from one to the other, gather a lot of information, buy things, listen to music. Um, for the past three years, it has rained every day. <laughs> every time we have it, no matter what we do, we can't get past the rain. Uh, and it's unfortunate because I think one time they didn't have the rain and they actually had the boats in the water and they had uh, the wakeboarders coming out, but because of that rain, it limits you. But even with the rain, they had Miss Lada there that you could take a ride if you wanted, but they also had their educational boat now that they have. Um, and they take the children from the different classes in the schools and they bring them out on the lake and they do environmental programs for them. It's beautiful and the, the children enjoy it. Um, then we went to the senior day uh, that was uh, hosted by Selective Insurance and we really had a very nice group. There was a lot of people there. All the vendors, again, were there with a tremendous amount of information and um, there were classes that were in, in full of information and there's others that were full of fun. And actually, uh, Carol and I went to the rock painting class, but they only allowed you to draw your picture. They didn't give us the paints to actually paint the picture, so um, we have to finish that at home. Uh, I did attend the Sussex Elk Lodge uh, annual veteran ceremony up at High Point. I did go and I intended to speak, but the wind was so bad and I had a skirt that it didn't work. <laughs> so I um, took my scarf, thank God I had it, and I tied my skirt in a bow, uh, making a whole new fashion. But I, all I could do was just sit there and then waddle my way down when it was over. I never saw wind blow so strong, right? She was seen her try to walk like that. <laughs> <laughs> and I was the only one there in the skirt. Uh, I should have just worn slacks, but I didn't, so I didn't get to get back on the track. I just had to sit there and hope for the best. But next year I will be prepared. Uh, but I do want to say that this weekend is Memorial Day, and uh, we really need to, to take the time and, and just reflect on what that day actually means. I know for many people, 
it's just a day of family and fun and, and entertainment, but we have that day because so many brave men and women gave their lives for us that we could enjoy our freedom and have the opportunity to do the things that we do. And I would just ask that in the midst of everything, take some time aside and just reflect on, on what the real meaning is of Memorial Day. And the last thing I want to talk about that you missed, George, was the Vets for Vets Program. Now, the first VETS is V-E-T-T-E-S, because this program uh, is, works together with the Pocono Mountains Corvette Club, and they will be hosting the sixth annual VETS to VETS <coughs> Veterans Outreach Program. And all veterans and their family members are welcome at the Chatterbox Drive-In Restaurant, and that's on Friday, June 8th from 5 to 8 p.m. And the program provides the opportunity for veterans to obtain information on services available through the Veterans Administration, various Sussex County agencies, and other local social <coughs> organizations. Now, if for each veteran who visits the agency tables, they will receive a $5 coupon towards their food purchase at the Chatterbox. It sounds like a really good time. Um, if you're interested, please contact the Division of Senior Services for additional, additional information. I think that's it. Thank you, Freeholder. Freeholders, approval of consent agenda. Please review consent agenda items A through N, excluding of. The Board of Chosen Freeholders of the County of Sussex has reviewed the consent agenda consisting of various proposed resolutions and determined that adoption of said resolutions is in and will further the public interest. Any freeholder would like to move an item to be considered separately, please do so now. Mr. Think Director, uh, it would be uh, appropriate for the board to consider a uh, motion to table uh, resolution letter I. Uh, it had been anticipated that the county would have uh, concluded uh, some of the particulars concerning this access agreement, um, but as to date, uh, the Office of County Council is working with school Council uh, to address uh, some of the outstanding issues. All right, we'll consider a few we'll consider, well, we're not there yet. Let's consider, uh, so we're gonna remove for a separate consideration I and O. Anything else needs to be removed for separate consideration? If anything is else, uh, please make a motion to approve consent agenda items uh, A through H and J through N, excluding uh, items I and O. A motion by Lazar. Second. Second by Patillo. Discussion? I, I'd like to just point out a couple of things. On C and D, uh, <laughs> authorizing an agreement between Sussex County retirees and credit card services to provide prescription benefit administration and services for the County of Sussex for term of May the 1st through April 30th in an amount of $2,881,082. That's for our retirees. Same type of agreement is the D, and that's two million six hundred thirty thousand four hundred twenty dollars for active employees. That's what we're paying in health benefits just for the prescriptions. And if you'll notice, the number for retirees is higher than for active. Just want to point that out. Thank you. Any further discussion, Mr. Prof, if you go through this, please. <coughs> yes. Uh, the first resolution uh, provides for uh, additional funds that will be used for cancer awareness programs. Uh, the uh, resolution B uh, allows for uh, uh, our senior farmers market nutrition program uh, for seniors at the congregate nutrition sites, uh, senior housing facilities, and senior clubs throughout the county. Uh, as uh, Fidel Graham had just mentioned, uh, resolutions uh, C and D provide for uh, the premium renewals for the prescription program uh, for county employees and its retirees. Uh, resolution E uh, provides for uh, the transfer of certain responsibilities uh, as part of the uh, Health and Human Services Personal Assistance Services Program uh, to provide for transfer of those services from one employee to another. Uh, resolution F uh, provides for renewal of an agreement with Byram for uh, sign manufacturing uh, that the county provides to its various municipalities. Uh, resolution G uh, provides for the acquisition of site easements uh, at the intersection of County Route 517 and Scenic Drive in Green Township. 
Uh, that uh, site easement project has been ongoing for a number of years, and this allows for the acquisition of that site easement. Uh, resolution, resolution H um, provides for <coughs> amendments to uh, the cash deposits and or bonding work uh, that is within the county's right of way. Uh, based upon the recommendation of the uh, Department of Engineering, uh, the current policy was established back in uh, 1959 and amended in 87 and 2006. Uh, again, based upon the department's review, uh, it is recommended that this be amended again. Uh, Resolution J uh, provides for staffing services that are used for social services and our Office of Records Management. Uh, Resolution K provides for the subordination of a mortgage that the County of Sussex has uh, with SCARC. Uh, this is based upon uh, development application uh, that SCARC is making and the bank requires the subordination of the county's mortgage. Uh, L is uh, amending a deed restriction uh, between the county, Frankfurt Township, and SCARC. Uh, as Frankfurt Township is looking to provide an additional contribution to SCARC uh, for the services that are provided uh, at that location uh, requiring an amendment of the deed. <clears throat> Resolution M provides for the authorization of professional services agreement uh, with James Lott of Riker Danzig uh, to continue and finalize matters uh, regarding the Cochrane House Condominium Association and associated issues. Uh, resolution N is a standard resolution that is put forward by the Office of Purchasing uh, to allow for uh, purchase orders to be issued for a variety of bid exempt services listed in the resolution. And that's it. that concludes. Uh, just want to point out that uh, item H, a resolution regarding the amendment policy and procedure used to determine the type of value of bonds and cash deposits. Uh, this should significantly streamline that process and it's another uh, step we're taking to try and make the county government more friendly towards the uh, development and, uh, and, and the process uh, for developers. Any further comments? The roll call please. Just remember you were voting on uh, the items with the exclusion of item I and O at this point. Roll call please. Freeholder Graham? Yes. Freeholder Lazaro? Yes. Freeholder Cotillo? Yes. Freeholder Director Rose? Yes. I have a resolution uh, to pass resolution I, which reads resolution regarding what? It's got to be We need to first bring it onto the table. Or if no one <coughs> makes a motion or second, it dies on the table. I have a motion to approve resolution I, re resolution regarding authorizing the County of Sussex to enter into right of access to license agreement with the County of Sussex. Sussex County Municipal Utilities Authority Skuma providing the school access to portions of the former Sussex Road property now owned by the County of Sussex for the purpose of advancing site investigations needed for the proposed Skuma Leach Shape Force Main. We move to table the motion. At, at this point, a table, but that motion, you'd have to motion to approve it and then table it afterwards, or if no one makes a motion or second, it would die for lack of motion or second. Are you making I a motion? I disagree with that, but okay, if that's how you want to do it. Because you can table a motion at any time you want before it's made. But I'll make a motion to, to uh, no motion. Uh, no for motion. Uh, no motion. motion. No motion. No motion. No motion. No motion by Lazaro. I'm sorry. Lacking a second, it dies for want of a second. I have a motion to approve resolution O, which reads resolution regarding authorizing the purchase of roadway traffic striping for the Sussex County Department of Engineering and Planning from Danzel Lane Painting Inc. in the amount of $519,741 for the 2018 season. So. Motion by Patillo. I'll make the second. Second by Rose. Discussion. Roll call, please. Freeholder Graham. Epstein. Freeholder Lazaro. Yes. Freeholder Patillo. Yes. Freeholder Director Rose. Yes. I have a motion to approve the minutes of the regular meeting held on May 9th, 2018. So. Motion by uh, Patillo. Second. Second by Lazaro. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? You guys have the motion carries. I have a motion to approve the minutes of the executive session held on May 9th, 2018. Motion. motion by Graham. Second. Second by Patillo. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? You guys have the motion carries. Appointments and or resignation. Resolution regarding appointment of John 
John Brucio, staff representative as a member of the Sussex County Transit Citizens Advisory Committee, said terms begin immediately and expire December 31st, 2020. Have a motion to approve. I'll move it. Motion by Patillo. Second. Second by Lazaro. Discussion? Roll call, please. Realtor Graham? Yes. Realtor Lazaro? Yes. Realtor Patillo? Yes. Realtor Director Rose? Yes. Resolutions. Uh, Realtors, please review resolutions uh, A and B, and when satisfied, please make a motion to approve both resolutions A and B. Make a motion. Motion by Graham? Second. Second by Patillo. Discussion? I think these are fairly obvious what they do. I want to talk to explain. Uh, yeah. Yes, the, the, the resolutions themselves are fairly <laughs> Yeah, self explanatory. Any, any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have the motions carried. C. Instruction for first reading ordinance. Ordinance regarding ordinance amending the previously established regulations governing road opening and access permits issued by the Division of Engineering for work within the Sussex County rights of way and work imp impacting transportation infrastructure owned or maintained by the county and augmenting the Sussex County land development standards. Motion to adopt this ordinance on first reading. So moved. Second. By, uh, till I'll second by Graham. Discussion. Um, yes, uh, in fact, this uh, ordinance will provide uh, for rather significant modifications, uh, allowing for and authorizing modifications to the permit fee schedule. It has been expanded to include uh, various operational issues. Uh, that come before the Division of Engineering as well as a general reduction in fees. There is a modification to the standard conditions for road, op road opening and access permits. Uh, this is a clarification uh, based upon the permit administration done within the Department of Engineering. It establishes guidelines for the review and permitting of small, small wireless antennas uh, within the county right-of-way under the road opening permit procedures. Uh, that is noteworthy as we have had uh, at least two vendors uh, approach the county requesting uh, some review and consideration of uh, the installation of such antennas. Uh, establishes guidelines for evaluating and permitting access points uh, which will serve utility infrastructures. Uh, this will include uh, cell towers, utility substations, and solar farms establishes guidelines for the evaluation and permitting of agricultural access points, provides authorization for the county engineer uh, or his duly authorized representative to develop documentation, uh, providing for applications, checklists, et cetera, and uh, allowing us to have uh, greater flexibility in the promulgation of those forms, uh, again, in an attempt to be more customer service oriented and making the application process uh, easier for uh, people seeking such permits. Thank you. Any further discussion? I'd just like to thank the engineering department. There's no representative here tonight, but they did a tremendous job uh, moving this forward, and, and it really presents a significant change in the way that we do business uh, with the respect to rights of way. So thank you, engineering department, for all your hard work in putting this together. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Greenville to Graham. Yes. Freeholder Lazaro? Yes. Freeholder Patillo? Yes. Freeholder Director Rose? Yes. Motion to authorize the clerk to advertise this resolution as introduced for first reading. Also, post same on the bulletin board in the lobby of the County Administrative Center together with the notice of public hearing stating the hearing will be held on June 13, 2018 at 7 o'clock p.m. prior to final adoption of this ordinance. We have a motion to pass that? Motion. Motion by Graham. <coughs> Second by Lazaro. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it, the motion carries. Words of contract, change orders, bids. A, award of contract. Resolution regarding award of contract for miscellaneous building train services electrical to Tatbit comp Company for work to be performed in and around various Sussex County buildings for the County of Sussex from date of contract award until May 31st, 2019. A motion? Motion. Motion by Graham. Second. Second by Patillo. Discussion? Uh, just uh, this resolution is very similar to other resolutions that the board has recently considered for uh, building trade services. Uh, you've considered carpentry, masonry. Uh, this particular resolution is for electrical services that will be uh, implemented uh, across a variety of county facilities. Thank you. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Freeholder Graham? Yes. Freeholder Pizarro? Yes. Freeholder Patillo? Yes. Freeholder Director Rose? Yes. Financial resolution regarding payments of bills, bill list A. Have a motion. 
So moved. Second by Lozano, second by Graham. Discussion. Roll call, please. Freeholder Graham. Yes. Freeholder Lazaro. Yes. Freeholder Patillo. Abstain. Freeholder Director Rose. Abstain. I have a motion uh, to pass resolution, financial resolution uh, B and C. So moved. Second. Motion, <coughs> motion by um, Patillo, second by Graham. <coughs> Discussion? Roll call, please. Freeholder Graham? Yes. Freeholder Lazaro? Yes. Freeholder Patillo? Yes. Freeholder Director Rooms? Yes. Personnel Office of the Sheriff Jail requesting increased hours of cook position from part time 30 hours per week to full time. Is a C. We, we did B and C. We did B and C together. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, Mr. That's why I was flipping back and forth there for yeah, a few sorry. times. They the <coughs> agenda called for two roll call votes. Right, I heard you. Sorry. Together. <coughs> Personnel, Office of the Sheriff Jail request increased hours of cook position from part time 30 hours per week to full time 40 hours per week, $34,358 annually. Division of Library Services request a pre position of assistant library director position full time 35 hours per week, $81,621 annually. I have a motion. <coughs> motion. <coughs> By Graham. Second by Tilla, discussion. Uh, just that both of these, uh, the first being uh, recommended by the sheriff and his staff uh, relative to the need for the increased hours of the cook position, and then also to uh, by the uh, library director um, requesting to create this position of assistant library director, which was discussed at the time that the library budget was developed for 2018. All right, and these are both budgeted items. Uh, yes, funds are available for both of these. Thank you. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Freeholder Graham. Yes. Freeholder Lazaro. Yes. Freeholder Patillo. Yes. Freeholder Director Rose. Yes. Administrative support. Uh, thank <coughs> you. Uh, I also had the opportunity to attend the uh, NJAC conference. Uh, had the ability to attend a few of the uh, conference sessions that were held including uh, FirstNet uh, presentation, which is the First Responders High Speed Broadband Network, which is a partnership between the federal government and AT&T. Uh, it is uh, just simply one option that uh, first responders can consider uh, when they're evaluating uh, their wireless communication needs as to whether they want to join in with the FirstNet network or not. Um, it was interesting. I also attended uh, a, a session that only a county administrator would enjoy on time and attendance. Um, it was uh, looking at uh, the hidden costs uh, associated with uh, overtime and time and attendance systems and in using technology to better manage uh, labor costs. And uh, lastly, a very interesting session on policy, policy shifts impacting the state's economic outlook. And the presentation was put on by the State Chamber of Commerce, the New Jersey Business and Industry Association, as well as the Small Business Association, uh, talking about issues of unemployment, attracting new business, and out-migration from the state of New Jersey. It was a very interesting session. Uh, as Freeholder Lazaro had already mentioned, uh, Sussex County Votech uh, uh, featured a venison tenderloin at their Taste of Sussex County booth. Uh, they received a gold uh, award from the uh, NJAC judges in display. And uh, really what is quite impressive is that there are a group of professional chefs that are actually brought in to uh, judge uh, these vocational schools. And uh, for Sussex County's debut entry into this, uh, they received a bronze uh, award uh, for the professional chefs for presentation. So it was really very impressive. Um, I'd like to take a moment and just um, uh, say that the library, uh, as part of uh, one of the capital authorizations that was put forward, is uh, working with architects and uh, library specialists to position the county uh, to be able to look to take advantage of the recent uh, Library uh, Construction Bond Act that was passed in November. As part of that process, uh, the library is uh, putting out a survey uh, for all those uh, that are interested in library services and how they use those services. Um, we would uh, recommend everyone uh, visit the library's website and uh, keep an eye out for the link uh, that will allow you to participate in that process 
and help give us better information as to how we can make our county library system work for you. Um, and last but not least, this is more a, a public service announcement. It just came to my attention today from the uh, New Jersey Association of Counties as well as the New Jersey Municipal Management Association that the IRS intends to uh, propose regulations that address federal, federal income tax treatment of certain payments made by taxpayers who would receive a credit against their state and local taxes. Uh, this is the whole issue that came about at the time of the uh, ta federal tax reform, specifically addressing SALT, uh, state and local taxes. The state has implemented legislation uh, that will go into effect July 3rd, um, but it's just simply a word of advice and caution, uh, more so for local units here in the state of New Jersey that actually are involved in the collection of taxes as they consider implementing uh, such uh, items that ultimately uh, are going to be regulated by the IRS. So just stay tuned for more on that. That's all. Thank you. Uh, County Council? Nothing to report. Thank you. Any unfinished business? Any new business? Public session from the floor. Please note everyone is asked to keep their comments five minutes or less, followed by a three minute response time from the freeholder board. Please state your name, print name, municipality on the sign sheet. We have a motion to open the motion to the public. Motion by Graham, second by Patillo. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it. The floor is open to the public. I'm here tonight representing the Human Services Advisory Council, also known as HSAC, of which I am a member. And I just wanted to give a report. Uh, today we had our fifth meeting of the year. And Mary Abrams from the New Jersey Association of Mental Health and Addiction Services conducted a really great seminar um, for us about fee-for-service presentation and focused on how the fee-for-service model has affected those in the behavioral health system. In addition, she stated that various agencies and organizations around the state are advocating for budgetary and legislative changes to the model that will ensure the sustainability of providers operating within the behavioral health system. Um, HSAC expressed its interest in being a partner with them in potential advocacy efforts on this important effort, which is going to keep us uh, abreast of what's happening. Also, HSAC is participating in the first biannual Sussex County Education Partnership Training Event, which is really exciting. It's going to be held on October 24th of this year. It will focus on educating our school personnel and staff with identifying early warning signs of mental illness in their students. Um, HSAC will have a student on a, a speaker on the agenda. We'll also have member resource papers set up, set up throughout the event to provide literature and available resource uh, information. We're very excited about that. Also during the month of May, HSAC and its subcommittees can only focus on planning and developing strategies that will allow for better allocation, provision, delivery, and financing of program, programs designed to meet the needs of the human service recipients in our county of Sussex. The Child Abuse and Missing Children's Committee is uh, currently reviewing submitted proposals for their 2018 project. Uh, the proposal will utilize $2,500 in grant funding to provide a prevention or educational program for abused children, their parents, or the parents of missing children, or it will provide a prevention or education informational um, information concerning the available services in our county and in the state for all abused children their parents or the parents of missing children. The Homeless Coordination Committee continues to work on a strategy that will strengthen its mission of planning and coordinating the delivery of emergency services, emergency services to the county's homeless population. Um, also, the HSAC continues to recruit new members in order to maintain and bolster its ability to meet the needs of our human services, uh, human service recipients in Sussex County. And we would like to thank our freeholder liaison, um, Dep freeholder deputy director Sylvia Patillo, the Department of Health and Human Services Administrator Carol Nobrick, and the rest of the members of the Sussex County Board of uh, Chosen Freeholders for their con continued support of HSAC and the work that it's doing in Sussex County. Thank you. 
and then wearing my other hat as the um, director of the Center for Prevention and Counseling. I just wanted to let you know, in case you haven't heard, uh, next week we're presenting our, presenting our annual spring conference. It's um, called Marijuana, the Real Deal. We've got national speakers coming, because as you might know, in the state legislature, they're talking about the legalization of marijuana. Um, it's a big concern to a lot of people, and we're really looking at the impact it's gonna have on our environment, on our roadways, on our workplaces, and on our youth. Uh, so we've got national speakers here to really give us the lowdown. We've got pharmacists coming, um, law enforcement, people from the schools, parents, people in recovery, uh, you know, a lot of different sectors of the community there. So I have a brochure which I'll give to everybody in case you haven't heard about it, just to share with everybody. Uh, it'll be held up in Vernon and we've got about 150 registered and uh, we have about 50 more spots. So we're really excited to be bringing you know, great prevention information to the residents of Sussex County. Thank you. Thank you. What's the date? Uh, the 31st. 31st. 8.30 to 3. Parades. Excuse me? Conflict with parades. No, Thursday. No, Thursday. Thursday. Thursday after Memorial Day. Yeah. It's a full day. It's 8.30 to 3. I think you're right. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? Seeing no one from the public, I have a motion to close the motion close meeting to the public. Motion by Graham. <coughs> Basilo, discussion. All those in favor? All those in favor? <laughs> those opposed? Yeah. Yes. I, I can't tell. Can I have a roll call? Oh, I said, you know, I'm going to Graham. Yes. I'm going to Mazzaro. Yes. Thank you. Reminders, date time, June 4th, 3 o'clock, camp planning board development here at the Freeholder Meeting Room. June 4th, 4 o'clock, camp planning board, at, it's a planning board meeting at the Freeholder Meeting Room. June 7th at 12 o'clock noon, senior advisor at the Sparta Senior Center in Trapasso Drive. June 14th at 7.30 p.m., water quality meeting and here in the Freeholder Meeting Room. June 14th, 7 o'clock p.m., regular Freeholder Meeting at the Freeholder Meeting Room. Adjourn, we have a motion to adjourn the meeting. Motion by the bill. I have a second. Second by Lazaro. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it. The meeting is adjourned.